Um, relief of symptoms associated with long COVID after a prolonged wear only fasting. So it turns out that we have been getting large numbers of calls from people suffering from long COVID and from COVID vaccine injury. So these are patients that either had COVID and never recover, and they have persistent symptoms, or they've had, they didn't have anything, but they got usually multiple vaccines, boosters, and then they've developed uh, symptoms that they're not recovering from. So vaccine injured and, and long COVID patients. And we've published our first paper, will be coming out in uh, Integrative and Complementary Therapies. This is a 73-year-old male who arrived at the True North Health Center after a history when he was infected with COVID in 2019. He had chest pain, diarrhea, cough, gas, brain fog, lightheadedness, elevated temperatures, sore throat, and it had gone on for six weeks. Uh, three to four months later, he developed sinus congestion, post-exertional malaise, cognitive impairment, and that had persisted for two years, those symptoms. So when we saw him, we brought him in for fasting. This is his weight before fasting, after fasting and after refeed, BMI, the blood pressure, as you can see. Uh, his fatigue intensity was severe before fasting was mild after refeeding. His fatigue frequency was always and was just occasionally after fasting. Brain fog went from severe to none. And the brain fog frequency uh, was rarely. Um, he reported that he continued eating the SOS-free diet and all symptoms remained stable except for the brain fog and fatigue, which reportedly worsened from mild to moderate between six and 12 weeks after departing from the residential fasting center. So nine months later, after his first visit, he developed another acute infection, which was confirmed to be SARS-CoV-2 infection by antigen testing. During the second infection, he reported splitting headaches, deep fatigue, but the symptoms were milder in comparison to the first illness. He did not experience post-exertional malaise, sinus congestion, loss of taste or smell, or any worsening of his existing fatigue and brain fog symptoms after fasting. And so we did a second fast. This was 15 months later for 10 days. And we did a follow-up six months later. And here are the results of that uh, second fast. And then after refeeding, you can see his weight was now 134. BMI and blood pressure were uh, the best they'd ever been. Uh, fatigue was mild, uh, frequency sometimes, brain fog was none, and brain frequency was never. And then follow-up six months later, you can see he'd regained his weight, which was good because he was underweight by the time we were done. Uh, <clears throat> his BMI was back in a healthy range. He had very mild uh, fatigue uh, uh, and only occasionally and had no brain fog or intensity. So he went from very severe symptoms to uh, very uh, mild residual with a couple of fasts, one of 14 days, one of 10 days. Now, that fasting duration was fairly short, but that was because he was a thin guy. He was actually, uh, you know, um, thinner uh, and so you can't, you, it, when obviously when you're thin, you can't fast quite as long as you would if you're, if you're bigger. This study was an exclusively plant-based diet for polypharmacy due to persistent atrial fibrillation, ischemic cardiomyopathy, hyperlipidemia, and hypertension in an octogenarian. What that means is it's an 82-year-old guy who had problems with his lipids, his heart. He was in atrial fibrillation. He had high blood pressure. And he came into us on a pile of pills. He had memory loss and cognitive impairment to the point where they thought he was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. What we did is we carefully weaned him off his medications and fed him an exclusively whole plant food diet and then got him moving around a little bit. And this is what happened. This is when he first came in and this is when he uh, discharged. Um, we've got Blood pressure from hypertensive to normal blood pressure. Weight about the same because he wasn't overweight. Cholesterol from 188 to 129. Triglycerides from 68 to 82. HDL lower. L LDL dramatically lower. 
patient adopted a treatment plan consisting of an exclusively plant food diet, and he recovered. Medications prior to um, starting, only thing left was this uh, medication, which would will would have been discontinued, but it, you have to uh, wait 12 months from the MI. So what was most remarkable is that he woke up. It turns out he didn't have uh, dementia at all. He had polypharmacy. He was getting cognitive impairment secondary to his drugs. And once we got him off his drugs, he became completely alert. What was fascinating was one of the reviewer's comments at the journal saying, what a remarkable case report this was, but what made us think it might be the drugs? Prolonged water-only fasting and the management of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is the most common cause of hypothyroidism. Hashimoto's thyroiditis uh, is essentially your body's immune system attacking your thyroid an autoimmune disease. And the reason why the body attacks the thyroid may be similar to the reason why the body attacks the gut in celiac disease. And gut gluten exposure causes the immune system to attack the gut. Um, if you don't eliminate gluten, it could become life-threatening, you know, serious problems. Well, in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, instead of the immune system attacking the gut, like in celiac disease, it appears to attack the thyroid gland and cause Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Interestingly enough, the HLA-DQ gene that's associated with Hashimoto's thy thyroiditis is the same gene associated with gluten sensitivity. So the theory is that it's the sensitivity to gluten that stimulates the immune system to attack the thyroid gland. In this case, though, you can see what happened. We have a 61-year-old female diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis 10 years um, prior after, so she's had it for 10 years after experiencing, you know, the weight gain, the edema, the joint pain, the fatigue, the constipation, the cold sensitivity, the brain fog, and the depression that are characteristic of this disease. We did, she was given 120 milligrams of armor thyroid and continued experiencing everything except the constipation. We fasted her for 21 days, followed by 10 days refeeding. Patient reported decreased fatigue, joint pain, brain fog, and depression. She contracted SARS COVID 13 three weeks later, returned to the standard American diet, regained 15 pounds, and all previous hypertension systems returned. Came back for a second fast. This was seven months later, underwent 22 days of fasting, 12 days of vegetable juice, 10 days of water only, followed by 10 days of refeeding, during which time um, experienced these changes. Now look at this TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, went from 61 down to 9.7. And CRP, C-reactive protein, a measure of inflammation, 13.4, down to 1.2. Armor thyroid doses actually was dropped from 120 down to 90. After the second fast, all previously reported symptoms resolved except for mild fatigue and intermittent cold sensitivity. Okay, so fasting is a really interesting process because a wide variety of conditions respond well to fasting. It appears that mostly the conditions that are aggravated or caused by dietary excess seem to be the conditions that respond the best and the most, but we're just beginning to really get the depth and diversity of conditions that will respond to this very interesting um, intervention. Uh, the research that we're doing, all of these studies that I'm citing here are done by the True North Health Foundation at the True North Health Center uh, and are all published in peer-reviewed journals. All of them are or will be available uh, on our website, uh, truenorthhealth.com, or uh, if you're just interested in uh, looking at uh, fasting research, you can go to fasting.org where there's actually a tool on there where you can actually search the fasting literature. Um, this particular paper, uh, I, I want to mention as well, this was uh, an exclusively whole plant food diet uh, in Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy. This is a condition that's normally treated by corneal transplant. Um, this person uh, presented with um, let me go back to the previous slide. There we go. This person presented with uh, uh, legal blindness 
uh, <laughs> and was able over a period of dietary change alone, we didn't even do fasting with this patient, just doing the whole plant food SOS free diet was able to re restore her vision, um, did very well. This was also a case, this was the non-pharmacological management of subacute uh, uh, appendicitis. So this was a gentleman who was told he needed surgery for subacute appendicitis, underwent fasting uh, for less than two weeks and was able to resolve it. And years later, uh, was able to sustain his um, health. So uh, we talked earlier about fasting and autophagy, fasting activating cellular stress response pathways and inducing autophagy. You know, this may be part of the mechanism explaining how so many of these diverse problems were able to resolve. Uh, again, we're still trying to figure out, you know, exactly how all this works. Unfortunately, right now, the True North Health Center is one of the few facilities in the world that's doing research on long-term water-only fasting. There's a lot of work being done on intermittent fasting and fasting mimicking issues, not as much on, um, on the long-term fasting. What I'd like to do now, um, since we do have a little bit of time left, is go ahead and try to open up uh, the the floor for questions. I know that there's been a lot of questions that people uh, undoubtedly have. 